Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we're going to start a brand new career mode game in the moderate difficulty setting. All of the defaults are set here. There's nothing out of the ordinary here selected, so we're going to start this game. And the objective of this episode today is to see how quickly we can do a moon landing and return just with the stock missions and stock parts. So I've already picked up the gather scientific data from Kerbin and the launch our first vessel missions. So we'll just put a quick vessel together. There's nothing special about this thing, a couple of goo units attached to the side and we're going to limit our fuel just so that we only go up a little way. We'll also fire the parachute at the same time in this case just to get in and out really quickly. So we'll save and launch this. What I'm also demonstrating in this episode is a mod called X Science, which just basically prompts you whenever there's science available. It isn't really that much quicker than just manually collecting the science, but it does mean that you can easily get notified when there is science available to grab. Now this video has been recorded in real time, it's been played back in real time. You can see down here in the bottom right corner I've got that clock there ticking away. So we've already picked up our science from the launch pad, we're also now picking up all the science from above the launch pad. At the same time of course we've already completed those first two missions that we picked up from Mission Control. So just after one minute of gameplay we unlock the first two tiers of our science tech tree. All we need for the moment though is just that little temperature gauge, we're going to stick a bunch of those on our vessel and we're going to launch a second time just to quickly grab some more science points using that temperature gauge. So we just call that Mission 2 and off we launch again. So we'll pick up any science we can there, the new temperature scan obviously we need to grab. Now we're going to launch over here and land on the crawl away. So that's going to mean that we can pick up a few more science points from there, that's essentially its own biome. Now you may be wondering why I've spammed the goo units and the temperature gauges all over the command pod there. Basically uh, we don't have any time to transmit all these things back. We're racing the clock so we just want to basically grab all this stuff and return it instantly. <laughs> and we just lost our $200 solid rocket booster there. That doesn't matter. We can live without that. It doesn't cost us a great deal of money. So we'll recover the vessel there. We've just picked up another 16.8 science, which we can now use to unlock our barometer, which is the next science instrument that we need so that we can grab some more wonderful science. Now, before we can get to the moon, we need to upgrade our launch pad once. Now, we don't have enough money for that at the moment, so we've got to work on that problem, as well as being able to obviously grab some more science to unlock a few more parts before we can do this mission. So getting close now to the three minute mark, what we're going to do here is save this vehicle in the vehicle assembly building, but we're actually not going to launch it from here. We're going to launch it this time on the runway. So we're going to go into the space plane hangar. We're going to then select this vessel, which oddly enough is placed up there in the roof. We'll launch this now on the runway. And now of course picking up all of that wonderful science using all three of our science instruments, crew reports, and that sort of thing. Also need to grab an EVA report as well from here. This is a new biome, so we can actually re-pick up all these things again. And what we're going to do now is launch ourselves out to the right here, um, which again is going to be another new biome. Jebediah Kerman now, of course, probably really wanting to get more than 200 meters off the ground, so we're looking forward to our next mission. Just picking up all that wonderful science, of course, from the ground here. We're at the shores, the Kerbin shores, picking up anything we can. This is going to be enough now to let us unlock the science junior unit, which is what we really want. So we've picked up another 30 science points, giving us a total now of 45 science points to spend, which is just enough to unlock this science junior, just enough. So we're going to pick that up and we're going to make our very first vessel that will actually leave the atmosphere. Obviously picked up that Escape the Atmosphere mission from Mission Control on the way in here to the Vehicle Assembly building. Now we're going to obviously ditch that solid rocket booster and we're going to replace this with liquid fuel. Eight of these liquid fuel tanks with a swivel engine down the bottom. Decoupler up the top and we will now just grab the Science Junior unit and place in between. Now I, I'm missing something, what am I missing? Um, oh, basic fins, we need basic fins, otherwise this thing's going to flop around all over the place, putting those on there, and we are ready to go, I think. Yep, that's it, let's go. Uh, 4.38, okay, so lost a few seconds there mucking around trying to figure out what I was doing. 
we're not picking up the material study yet. We want to leave that for when we escape the atmosphere because it's going to give us more science points. So we're going to basically time accelerate using our physics warp um, as fast as we can, basically, which is really only around three times acceleration because uh, four times seems to break this thing apart in experience. The X science there giving us a whole heap of new science instrument readings to pick up because we are now classed as flying high over Kerbin Shores, picking all that up there. Now our apoapsis marker was around 75,000 in altitude so um, what we're going to do is leave a little bit of fuel in our tank and actually thrust backwards here shortly. And whoops I didn't mean to grab that material study, we'll reset that. We actually want to get this above the atmosphere which is coming up here in a second. We of course just need to wait until we get above that 70,000 meter mark and... There we are there, so we can now pick everything up, all of our science instruments, including the new science junior unit study, and we're going to grab all of that and immediately turn ourselves down backwards. We're going to thrust back down towards the ground just so that we can reduce some of the time that we spend up here in the air. We want to get to the moon as quickly as possible, of course. Now, because we only just got up above the atmosphere, we're not going to be entering with enough velocity to do any real damage to any of our instruments here. Normally, you would need a heat shield, of course, if you were re-entering the atmosphere at a much higher velocity than this. Re-entering there, passing through that hotter part of our re-entry. There we go, and coming down quite quickly, we're using our physics warp still to try to get down here as quickly as possible. And pulling our chutes there, <laughs> that was actually getting a little bit close. Just going to cut that physics time warp just as we touch into the ocean there. Coming down. And touch down there, we're going to quickly EVA grab everything that we can, all of our science, and we're going to return to the Kerbal Space Center, recover the vessel. So we've gathered there 93 science, which is going to help a lot. We need to unlock some more parts. We need our Terrier engine. We need some bigger fuel tanks. We need some struts as well. Um, so we're going to unlock these tiers of the tech tree. We need to upgrade our launch pad for 75,000. We've got plenty of money for that. And we're also going to grab that last mission to orbit Kerbin. Okay, now we need to basically cut as many parts out of this as possible. We're not going to take a lot of our science instruments. We're going to take one science junior unit and we're going to store that experiment in the storage unit. We're returning from the moon in this mission, so we need a heat shield. Now I mentioned there that I unlocked the struts. Now I'm not actually going to use the struts, but what we are going to use is auto strut. Now to unlock auto strut, you actually need to have the struts part unlocked, which is interesting. And you also need to have advanced tweakables turned on in your settings to do this. But you need to auto strut this, otherwise you can't time accelerate with this thing without the whole vessel flopping around all over the place. So you'll see there I did auto strut that FLT400 fuel tank and I'm going to be duplicating this fuel tank meaning the auto strut settings is going to apply all the way through. So for our main core stage we have four of those fuel tanks with a Terrier engine at the bottom. We're going to then duplicate this and we're going to have three sets of five fuel tanks for our main booster stage. And to power our booster segment, we're going to have one swivel engine for the central engine there to give us some more control, and we'll just have the two Reliant engines for the outside. Now you may be wondering why I've removed all the science instruments, basically because we can only have 30 parts with our vehicle assembly building not upgraded to level 2. So that is why we've got exactly 30 parts here now. And launching our final mission here. Okay, Jebediah, hopefully we've got the Delta V needed to get to the moon here. We're at around nine minutes here now. Again, we are physics warping as much as possible to try to speed up this launch process. And you can just see how wonderful these auto struts are working. If you didn't have the auto struts, this thing would be just completely unstable. And of course, the auto struts don't add to your part count, so that's an even bigger bonus. Punching up through the atmosphere, getting a little bit of heat there, and we'll decouple this booster stage. Now this second stage with our Terrier engine is going to get us all the way to the moon, allow us to land as well as return, and all of this Delta V is available just from these top four fuel tanks. 
So obviously I am racing the clock in this mission. There are definitely some savings to Delta V that you can have compared to what I'm going to be doing here. So don't crucify me because I'm not being quite as efficient as I could be. What I'm trying to do, of course, here is basically burn this whole stage to the moon as fast as possible so that I can time accelerate out of here, get to the moon, land and return. Just coming up now past orbital velocity, a little longer to go and we will be intercepting with the moon. Obviously, you do also have to time your launch correctly so that the intercept here is possible. Um, basically, though, I didn't actually change my time. I didn't time warp at all to get this launch window. This was the launch window I had straight from the start of the stock game. So um, you can do the mission exactly as I've laid it out here without, uh, without trying to time this. Now, sadly here, of course, we don't yet have patched conics unlocked from the tracking station. So we need to basically eyeball this. We don't even know if we've got an encounter until we time warp in and basically end up in the moon's sphere of influence. And there we go there. You can see that we just fell into the moon's sphere of influence. So now what we want to do is just slightly adjust our, uh, our flyby of the moon currently so that it's going to impact right on the surface. So we're just doing a very small... Uh, radial in burn here just so that we do actually intercept with the moon's surface. There we go there. Really losing a few seconds here. Come on, come on. Okay, we need to uh, just basically turn in a retrograde direction just so that when we come down uh, we can start burning straight away. As soon as we sort of hit around that 22,000 mark we're going to start burning uh, basically as fast as possible so that we can reduce our velocity enough to hopefully touch down on the moon again using that physics warp to make sure that we cut as much time out of this as we can we have that speed now down to around 200 meters per second we could actually have probably um, cut that suicide burn just a little closer it's it's difficult when you're playing with time warp on you you have to be really really quite um, fast in how you react to this on the way down I'm really just eyeballing this landing here. Normally I'd be using Kerbal Engineer with the Suicide Burn readout. That would give me a pretty good estimate of when to start burning. But we're really just, uh, as I say, eyeballing this. Now obviously we're not going to have an extended period on the moon's surface. We are not going to balance very well. We're just simply going to touch down, grab a crew report, grab that material study, and then we're out of here. Ugh, definitely could have landed faster than this. Come on, come on. Now I've popped out that X Science Here and Now mod panel again just so I can quickly snap up this crew report and material study as soon as we touch down. Got to touch down gently without landing legs. And there we go. All right, grab these science readings. Wait, that's not the material study from the surface. Ah, oh, come on. Get that. Come on, come on. That's the one. Okay. There we go. And off we go. We're going to lean this thing right over 90 degrees as flat as we can. Without hitting a mountain, of course. Just coming up on 13 minutes. Can we get back to Kerbin in under 15? Now, because we're already facing back towards Kerbin, we can actually just accelerate straight past orbital velocity and keep going, and that's going to eject us straight out of the moon's sphere of influence and hopefully get us pretty close to a encounter back with the surface of Kerbin. Just time warping here to see how we can get around... Ke oh, crap. <laughs> I just did a full orbit by mistake. Uh, that's not going to lose us any time, though. That orbit actually isn't looking too bad. Just a slight retrograde burn here. We're going to bring this right down to see if we can reduce the amount of time we spend in the atmosphere. We've got a good heat shield here. It should be enough to keep us safe. Just quickly, though, we need to move our science from the science junior unit into our experiment storage unit so that we can re-enter without this science junior unit attached. Time warping in right up until we're about to hit the atmosphere of Kerbin. you got to be careful you don't want to time warp it too fast, otherwise you just shoot straight past the periapsis marker, which is kind of odd. Wow, and just out of pure luck, just happened to be passing straight over the Kerbal Space Center there. That, uh, that wasn't at all intentional. Okay, turning our vessel retrograde to absorb as much heat with that heat shield as we can on the way down. Re-entering here at over 3,000 meters per second. Because of the angle of descent here, uh, old Jebatai is going to be uh, experiencing quite a huge amount of g-force. Now, of course, if we had have come in at a much higher altitude, we wouldn't have re-entered anywhere near that far. So just using this physics time warp, we were able to come right down here, uh, hopefully to land here very soon in the ocean. 
passing through that cloud layer. Come on, come on, we want to beat 15 minutes. Parachutes out there. Uh, and of course, this final little descent is going to take us quite a long time. Come on. Come on, come on, get down. And splash down, and we've beat 15 minutes by just two seconds. <laughs> That's wicked. So there you go there, 135 signs earned from that first moon landing mission, and of course we've done all that from game start in just under 15 minutes. So there you go, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, please do take a second and give it a thumbs up. All of your support on this channel helps a great deal. If you have any questions for me, please obviously whack them down in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you that have subscribed. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. And oh, no, I kind of, I kind of chickened out there a little at the end. Hang on, hang on, I can do better than that. We'll come back round. We'll do more of a nose dive at it. Oh crap, crap, crap! Pull up. <laughs> Good lord, that was close.